To achieve a flat wash, apply a little bit of water and brush into the paint color of your choice, and then apply it in one direction on the watercolor paper. You may need to re reapply the paint a few times, that's totally fine, but your goal here is nice, even, consistent color. With a graded wash, you're going to start out the same as a flat wash. Begin to apply the color directly to your paper, and then dip your brush in water and apply the water directly over top of the paint. You're going to see me do that right here. So I'm just taking water and applying that into the paint. And what that does is more water lightens the watercolor paint. So as I apply the water, what you'll notice is the water is kind of pooling around on me. So just to help control that, I'm going to blot it with a paper towel to remove some excess water. Sometimes you'll need to do this, sometimes you won't, it just depends. Um, and then I'm actually going to use a dry fan brush to just lightly brush over top to create a nice graded wash. Our next technique is wet and wet, and you're actually going to apply just water directly to your paper. So paint water with a clean paintbrush on your paper. I'm just kind of swirling around, making a little pool of water. Then you're gonna select a color. I'm gonna go with blue. And you are going to dip your paintbrush in the color and apply it directly to the water. So what you'll see is this is a little bit more organic, freeform. The watercolor is gonna control itself. This is a really cool way to create backgrounds, different textures, it's a great way to do galaxies. In fact, I even let it dry for a little bit and then I'll go back in and add some more color. The next technique is using salt. So you're just going to apply watercolor directly to your paper. Feel free to use whatever colors you want, mix them if you want. Just make sure you have a lot of water. Then you're gonna apply a little bit of salt directly on your paint, let it dry, then you can um, actually brush it off for a cool texture. Next up is rubbing alcohol. So what you're gonna do is apply paint to your paper. Make sure, like the salt, you use a lot of excess water. Feel free to mix colors if you want. Then you're going to apply the rubbing alcohol directly to the paint. And what you'll see is it sort of resists and creates like a little burst. It's almost kind of like an acid wash effect in a way. So you can kind of uh, splatter it on there, use a Q-tip, you can use a paintbrush, you can use a dropper or a spray bottle. Next up is dry brush. With dry brush, you're going to do exactly what it says. Use a dry paintbrush and kind of damp paint. So the goal here is to achieve texture. You want to see the bristles and the line work of the brush. This can be really cool um, as a way to layer and create different textures with the paint. So just try some different brushes and see which ones you like. Graffito is another way to add texture into your work. So start by just laying down a color of your choice, and then you're actually just going to use the back of your paintbrush or something else to kind of etch into the paint, which you're going to see here in just a second. So I'm just going to write hello with the back of my paintbrush. And when that dries, it just um, is kind of a subtle, cool way to have texture in your art. Next up we have sponge, and you're just basically going to use the sponge instead of a paintbrush. So dip it in water, and kind of squeeze out the excess water so you don't have too much. Select your color, and just sort of dab the sponge directly onto your paper. You can layer paint, you can let it dry, add more on top of it. It's a really just cool way to blend, add texture, it's cool for skies, it's cool for galaxies, all sorts of things.
So masking is basically a way to just save the white of your paper and paint over top. Uh, this example is not the greatest, I apologize, but here I'm showing you that you can just lay down masking tape in a design. You could write a word, you could create a design, whatever you wanted to do. And then you can also use rubber cement glue. And I'm just going to apply it just kind of in a general little kind of patch, but you could paint, you know, lettering. I've done it to black out clouds. Um, but anyway, you're going to let the rubber cement dry before you paint over top of it. Uh, the tape obviously is good to go. Uh, then take your color, your paint, whatever, um, you know, combination you want to use and just paint directly over top of it. Don't worry about the rubber cement. It's going to kind of resist the paint as you're going. Um, so just paint over top of it. And actually, to be honest with you, I think the um, rubber cement just kind of has a cool texture. So I've actually done paintings where I've just left the rubber cement. Um, but then you're going to let the paint dry. And then you're going to peel off the masking tape and then you'll reveal your design. And you'll notice I accidentally ripped a little bit of my paper here. I wasn't uh, careful enough, so you want to be careful with that. And then the rubber cement, you can actually just kind of roll it off with your finger. And then the white of the paper is there. So you may remember wax resist from elementary school, but that's basically just drawing with crayons or oil pastels, any sort of design, and then layering paint, watercolor paint over top. And then the paint, of course, um, resists the wax. Elmer's glue is actually sort of similar to wax resist in that you're going to use it to create a design. I'm just going to do some kind of basic line scribbles. Um, but you have to let that Elmer's glue dry before you paint over top. That's very important. Uh, after it's dry, it's a little hard to see on my paper because it is dry and it's clear. Uh, but you're just going to layer paint directly over top. Um, and then you'll notice that the Elmer's just kind of resists the paint and it just creates cool texture. Um, this could be cool for clouds any sort of line work, any sort of design you want to put in. Uh, you can actually tint the glue too, like put black or a different color in if you don't want it clear. And then plastic wrap is um, a super cool technique. It works best, in my opinion, with lots of different colors that work well together and uh, lots of water in your paint. Then you're going to take a little piece of plastic wrap, layer it over top, press it down. I like to kind of pinch it up in areas. This is optional. It just creates a little extra texture, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so once you do that, you want to make sure you leave the plastic wrap on and let that paint dry. And then when it's done, you're going to peel it off. And it sort of has like a cool like stained glass effect.